I told you I'll be back for a second show today. Um, Frank Martin and Andy Cruz will pick up the wins. We're going to get into it. And I'm drooling all over the place. Um, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, quick hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. Keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Also, um, Please like, share, and subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Um, all right, who do you want? To, let's get in, in, into Frank Martin first, because that was a, a really, really, really good fight with Artem. And I'm going to butcher the last name. I know they said it all day. Herdenon. I'm, I'm going to call him Herdenon, who I want to see again. Um, I, I thought he was good. I thought he was uh, awkward. I, I think he can, he can be a problem. Uh, for a lot of fighters, uh, just going through his, his his resume, there's not a ton on it. Um, yeah, there's really not much on it, but he he, he looked pretty good. He looked like a solid opponent. He, I, I think he can make life difficult for you. He made life very difficult uh, for Frank Martin, uh, but Frank Martin finally got through it and and and, and survived. Um, so kudos to Frank Martin, and he came alive there. I, I gave him the last four. How did y'all score the ninth? I gave him the ninth. Therefore, I gave him the fight 114-113. Otherwise, I had the same score card as Steve Forhood, but I, I, I flipped the ninth. I gave him the ninth. I thought he rallied and took that round. Um, and then he dominated the 10, 11, and 12. He got the knockdown in the 12th. I thought he probably got a knockdown in the 11th too, but he came on strong. I, I felt he won, although it was very, very close. Like, to me, it came down to one. Um uh, 150 50 round that I gave to Martin, which you could have scored the other way too. It was very close to the ninth round. Um, I guess there were some other rounds in there too. You could have flipped. Uh, I, I don't think it was that hard. I don't think there was that many close rounds. I thought Harden on won the round that he won. And then Frank Martin won six, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? And, and I think it was one of the fourth, was it the third or the fourth? I, so I, I thought those were clear. Um, but Martin, like Martin showed you how good he is. Martin. Once he got busy and once he decided he had to win the fight, he won the fight, right? And it, Like, by hook and by crook, he got it done. I, I don't know why he – he said his timing was off. His timing was clearly off. I think it has to do with hurting on reach and kind of unconventional style. It's kind of awkwardness. I, I think that had a lot to do with it. He needed to get cooked quicker, though, right? Like, from the sixth round on, um, he, I, I thought, okay, you're the better fighter. Frankie Martin is light and – Light years, night and day, better than hurting Jan. I, I know I'm saying that wrong, but who cares? Um, light, light years better. Um, he just needed to go put his punches together. He just needed to throw punches, and because when he did, he hurt him, and he had success. And just where was it? Right? It, it reminds me a lot of like what Josh Greer did with Maloney. He said, "What? You're just not throwing. You got to throw, pal." Um, and you didn't really see that. Right, he didn't throw a ton, and and when he did, he had great success with it. He almost stopped him in the eleventh and the twelfth. Frank Martin's problem, man, is southpaw, good power, really good speed. Like, there's a lot to like about Frank Martin. Um, just keep your hands, stay active. You know, don't 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 keep your hands in your pocket. You got to keep throwing. Uh, but defensively, he's good. You know, he can be jabbed. You know that 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 was obvious. a lot of times you don't want to jab with a southpaw. He can be jabbed. Um. So it's you know I would a master jab like Devin Haney Lomachenko oh well, Lomachenko's you know South that would be that would be interesting I I think he can beat these guys I I really do uh, but you know it, he can be had um, and Shakur Stevenson would, would would beat him but the rest of these guys I got, he, he's gonna be right there with him Frank Martin's a special talented fighter a gifted fighter who's gonna be in look one thirty five is loaded absolutely loaded. Now we got another one, Andy Cruz. Andy Cruz was sensational in there, though, um, for real. Andy Cruz looked sensational at 135. Um, 
first fight, he fought Burgos. You know, Burgos has been there with Mikey Garcia, Hector Tanahara, Devin Haney. He's been in there uh, with, 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 with absolutely everyone. And look, I'm going to, I got a couple thoughts. I think my more interesting thoughts are on Andy Cruz. Look really good. Technically sound. You can see the skills. You can see the amateur pedigree. It's there, right? He, throw, he, he throws combinations. He fires off. He's good, right? He's, he's accurate with stuff. His accuracy is what's really going to help him. Um, he mixes up his shots. He's technically sound. He doesn't get hit a lot. That's what we like about him. What is that? It's not that I, I there's nothing, there's something I, anything I, I, I dislike about him. I don't know. I didn't see anything next level about him, right? You look at a prospect and, and sometimes you just say the power or the speed or the explosiveness, He's just like a, a robot. That, that I don't mean he's mechanical like that. Like he's just trained well. He he knows his craft extremely well. But I don't see explosive power. I don't see incredible hand speed. I don't see explosiveness. I don't see dazzling footwork. I just see a guy that is really, 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 really well schooled, and he's gonna be a good pro. He's gonna be a good pro. How good is he though? Right? Like, and you know. They're saying, you know, Eddie Hearn said he's ready for Tank. No, he. I, I don't think he's ever going to be ready for Tank Davis. I'm just at about the same age, and like, I don't see it. Like, I, I don't see what I show in Shakur Stevenson, right? Um, you know, I was talking to Texas Run Boxing on Twitter, um, and, and I said, I, um, uh, he said Keyshawn Davis knocks him out. I think Keyshawn Davis is going to be a better pro. I think Floyd Schofield is going to be a better pro. I'm not trying to put any shade on this guy. It's just one fight, right? But he's already 27, and Eddie Hearn telling me he's ready, ready. Well, if this is ready, ready, he's good. He's really good. He's going to beat most fighters, right? But he's in the wrong division. This division is absolutely loaded. Tell me what he did that was absolutely next level. Tell me what he did that was so great that like, oh my gosh, this this is this is it, right? And you know, everyone gets so hyped up and so gloss over the two gold medals. And he's a great amateur, one of the great amateurs of all time, right? But the pro game is different. You're not gonna win if you don't put some stank on your punches, if you can't come in from different angles and score with different angles. Like you're just not gonna sit there and outbox him for three rounds and, and, and run. Now, he didn't run in this fight, but if he's fighting a guy like William Zepeda, who I said would beat him, or, or, or Tank Davis, who, who can knock you out, Isak Cruz, guys that can crack, and you can't hold your own. And this is what I was saying about Josh Kelly. Hold your own, hold your ground, bang with him, right? Um, and make him regret trying to walk in the front door, right? Keep him off balance, make him try to use front side doors, and then, you know, catch him when he does. If you can't do that, if you can't sit down in spots and exchange combinations, you're not going to make it at the highest level. And that's ultimately, I'm not saying that's going to be the problem with Cruz. I'm saying that's what I'm seeing through one fight. Right? You want me to think that he's already at a championship level? He's not. Um, but again, for a first fight, it's an excellent performance. If, if, if you didn't give me all the hype and you just said, here's a 27-year-old making his pro debut who had a good amateur pedigree, what do you think? I think he's really good. I think he's got super sharp skills. I think he's super accurate. I think he mixes up his punches. Well. I think he uh, maintains the distance. He judges his distances really well. He works his distances. He works his combinations, right? Um, he can keep his opponent at bay. He can dictate the pace of the fight. His ring IQ is through the charge, right? I, I, there's so much to like about him one fight in. What I'm saying is, did I see the next great thing? I, I can't say I, I can't say I did. I, I cannot say I did. But let me know what y'all think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. To keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, please also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. It is July 16th, 2023. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.